Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. We have Bowman Baseball coming out in just a few days. It's one of the biggest sets of the card collecting season for baseball. And the thing that is on every collector's mind is who are going to be the Bowman firsts. And out of those players, which are the ones that I should be investing in? Well, I've done some research. I've done some digging. I know who most of the first Bowmans are. And I think I have five different cards that you are going to want to target in Bowman Baseball 2021. So it's time to get excited. The first prospect set of the 2020 card collecting season we are on the eve of its release. It is Bowman Baseball, always one of the most popular sets in the card collecting season. And I have found five Bowman first cards that you're going to want to target in Bowman Baseball 2021. Now, I pick these players all based on stat collecting advice. It is not me hyping personal cards that I'm going to collect. It is not me hyping players that... I, that, that a lot of people are going to hype to increase card values. It is people that I believe, based upon how well that they play the game and what their stats say, could have future success in baseball. So how did I develop this list? Well, all of, first of all, most basically, all of the players are confirmed to have first Bowman cards in the 2021 Bowman baseball set. The reason I know that, well, Bowman first edition has already come out, and a lot of those cards will be included in the Bowman baseball set. Also, all of the players I chose are based upon long-term projections. So um, that is at the big league level. Now, a lot of these players, some of them are only like 18 years old, so it may be a few years before they get there. But... Like most Bowman cards, the investment potential on these is more long-term than it is quick flip. Obviously, you can quick flip, flip some of these cards. However, these are cards you're going to want to hold on to for a couple years till the players make the big leagues. And it's possible that some of them don't. However, I think the five I've chosen, I think you're going to find after you see some of the stats that these players probably have bright futures at the MLB level. The other thing, as I mentioned earlier, is all of these picks have to have significant stats and relevant proof points to back up why I'm picking them. So there's no opinions here and there's no hype. It's all based on stats. And then finally, I do give an investment risk rated on a one to five point scale. The higher the number, the higher the risk. And I always have to say it, just know that the picks are based on my own research. They don't guarantee that cards are going to go up in the future. This is more meant as a guide and of cards that may make good investments in the future. Just like any other investment, they all come with risks, including sports cards. So take that into account when you're seeing this list and when you decide if you want to buy into some of them. So before we begin, a couple things. If you like these sort of investment videos, we do them regularly here on the One Cent Sports Card channel. So if you like them, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. That is the best way to get all of these videos as they come out. And if you want to be the first person to see them, be sure to hit that notification bell so you're notified when all of the videos go live. And if you want to be a smart Bowman investor, uh, investor or a s smart sports card investor in general, I advise that you go check out the site, sellthepeak.com. And as a viewer of the One Cent Sports Cards channel, I'm going to give you 30% off of your first month's membership. Now, why sell the peak? I'll give you three reasons to believe. First of all, if you become a member, you can do card charting and PSA population reports. Uh, you can do sales history and card comparisons, and it's all in one dashboard. So no clicking around and, and trying to cross-reference and you know do pivot tables in Excel and all that. It's all in one dashboard, really easy to see. And you can also get real-time eBay sales history, including the actual best offer accepted prices. So when you see that crossed out line and you go, well, what did they really buy it for? Well, Sell the Peak is going to help you there too. And they also provide you player-specific pages that have multiple cards on and a sales charts for all of one player, 
all in one view. And you can even do multiple players and multiple cards. And so if you use the promo code OC30, go to sellthepeak.com, go to sign up as a membership. Membership is much less than some of their competitors, and they're going to give you everything that you, that any other competitor is going to give you and possibly more. The customer service is exceptional. So if you use that code OC30, that's for watching my channel, you can get 30% off your first month's membership. First month's membership is going to be $10. If you use my code, you can get it for $7 to test drive it, see if you like it. You can cancel at any time. But if you use that code for seven bucks, you can chart cards and you can become a better Bowman investor, baseball card investor, or sports card investor. So my first player for Bowman 2021, going to be the obvious one. That is Austin Martin. He is a Blue Jays prospect, kind of um, right now, basically a shortstop, may end up at third base, plays a little bit of outfield. And here's three reasons to believe in Austin Martin. First of all, he was drafted back in 2020. He was fifth overall in the draft. He actually dropped a little bit in the draft. He was regarded as one of the top scouts in the uh, or one of the top hitters by scouts in all of the draft. He fell to five, which was unthinkable when the draft happened, and uh, the Blue Jays were happy to take him there. So. One of the best hitters in the draft. By most scouts, he was considered the best hitter in the draft. And while he was at Vanderbilt, that's where he went to college, his home runs improved every year. So his home runs to a bat ratio went up, um, and he became more and more of a power hitter the more he built into his frame. And finally, he was a 368 hitter in college. Um, and his scouting grade is 65 that's out of 80 it is really hard to get a 65 so we are talking a uh just a pure pure uh hitter we are talking someone that is getting more and more power every year he comes through again he's on that blue jays uh prospect farm system which is just loaded loaded with talent a very young team uh they have shown a history of being able to foster young talent bring them up to the major league level and succeed. Going to be a ton of hype around Austin Martin. Going to be one of the big chase cards. Definitely, definitely, there's a reason he's going to be a chase card. This one's kind of obvious, guys. He's going to be one of the most sought-after cards in this set. But th that is all for good reason. These stats back a lot of that up. What do I think the risk is on Austin Martin? I'm going to go ahead and say it's a two out of five. I do believe he's going to make the majors. He will probably make short order of the minor leagues, probably be up in the majors within, call it a, call it a two-year time frame, probably be there in 23, and uh, not a ton of risk here, but as with any Bowman card, I don't think I would give anything a low, low risk of a one, but if there's anything that's a sure bet out of the 2021 Bowman set, it's probably going to be Austin Martin. My next player, kind of another obvious one here, but Blaze Jordan of the Red Sox. He's a third baseman, and Blaze Jordan here are your three reasons to believe in him. First of all, he was drafted back uh, in round three of the 2020 draft, but the Red Sox paid him $1.75 million, which the, if you know anything about how the draft works, that slot value puts him as a high second round pick. They underdrafted in the first round um, and with Nick York, and they spent more to get Blaze Jordan. So they invested heavily in him. We're happy to see him sitting there in the third round. So they drafted him, even though he's a third round pick, he's more of a high second round talent based upon where they slotted him in with his pay. The other thing is he is considered by most of the draft experts to be uh, one of the top three power hitters in the 2020 class. As all of you guys know, home runs make card values go up in baseball. This guy has pure power. He is a fantastic power hitter. Uh, still has a little bit to develop in regards to strikeout ratios and stuff like that. But again, that's what you do in the minors. You work, you work on your fundamentals. By the time you get up to the majors, you are major league ready. And if that power is there, especially playing for a franchise like the Red Sox, a lot, a lot of hype will be uh, blazing up around Blaze Jordan. 
And the other thing to keep in mind, he is only 18 years old, so he does have that time to develop in the minors. If he gets called up in two years, he's only going to be 20 years old. He's going to be one of those young talents. I believe that you'll see with that power, if he can really, really come around to becoming a contact hitter on top of it, um, hone some of those skills, there's a little bit of defense that he does need to work on. But as prospects go and as card values go, we're looking for power hitters. We're looking for hitters that can do damage at the major league level. And Blaze Jordan is definitely profiled as one of those players. My risk value on Blaze Jordan, I'm going to go ahead and put him at a 3 out of 5. Like I said, there's a little bit of stuff with his defense that needs to be worked on. Uh, a little bit of a high strikeout ratio, but he's only 18 years old. That is not unheard of. I believe that he will make it to the major leagues. And I believe that he's going to have a lot of success there. And he could end up being one of those people that uh, is just a power hitter every year, lots of home runs. And as everyone knows that collects baseball cards, uh, everyone digs the long ball. So my next player, going to be Kevin Alcantara of the Yankees. He's an outfielder. Now, this one is a little bit less known. Um, and here's your three reasons to believe in Kevin. First of all, another 18-year-old. He signed in the international uh, class of 2018, so he was only 16 when he signed, and he has all the rankings from the scouts of being a future five-tool player. Um, his power uh, ranking is already a 55 at 18. His hit ranking is at a 50, and his speed or his running ability is at a 60. That is unbelievable for an 18-year-old. That is something that you do not see very much. There's a reason why the Yankees got him when he was 16 years old and he is already um, showing some of that potential uh, for in the Yankees organization why is that well he went from unranked all the way to number 12 in the Yankees farm system and their prospect rankings in 2021 so he leapfrogged tons of um, tons of other prospects in the Yankees farm system he's already at 12 he is only 18 years old and so I believe that when you see jumps like that that the that the scouts and that the and and the scouting folks are looking at that and saying this guy is progressing fast we got to bump him up so he's already 12th at the age of 18. one of the reasons the scouts might be saying stuff like that is when you look at his exit velocity, which is so important when it comes to hitting, um, obviously launch angles, stuff like that. But when you're talking about hitting for uh, power and you're hitting for slugging, uh, stuff like that, you are definitely, definitely looking at exit velocity. And he consistently ranks as one of the top rated exit velocity producers in the Yankees farm system. Guy can hit. He is a fantastic, fantastic future, future potential for power and being one of those guys that can hit doubles to the gaps, probably would look something like a four-hole batter, maybe a five-hole batter. And if he gets really good, you might see him in the top two or three batters in a batting lineup sometime here in the future at the Yankees major league level. My risk level for him, he's still young. Um, sometimes with these international um, signees, they don't translate well into the farm systems uh, here in America. But with the way that he is progressing up through, I think he is a fairly safe bet. There is a little bit of risk there, but I'm going to go ahead and give that a 3.5 out of 5. So who's our next player? Well, that's going to be the big boy. That's Aaron Sabato. He's with the Twins. He's a first baseman. He has all the makeup of a first baseman, too. Just a big guy. Um, and here are your three reasons to believe in Aaron Sabato. First of all, he has insane power potential. Out of all the guys that are on this list, again, we're going back to the home run ball. Who's the home run hitters? Who are the guys that who are the guys that are going to be future home home run hitters at the MLB level? Well, Aaron Sabato, let me tell you, he has in 295 at bats, he had a career 25 home runs and a slugging percentage of a mere 698 in college. That is an insane, insane amount of home runs. That is an insane slugging percentage. That is straight up video game numbers. Um, and he is considered by the scouts 
to have the best raw power in all of the Twins farm system. So the Twins, obviously a smaller market club. They build from within a lot. A lot of those players that you've seen come up, think Brian Buxton, all of those. Um, and the, all of those players um, were built up in the Twins farm system. And Aaron Sabato is going to be another one of those guys that comes up through. Um, and he's got more raw power than any of the other hitters in that system. His scouting grades, well, he's got a 50 for hit, which is fantastic for where he's at at his level. And his power scouting grade is a 60 already. So this is a guy that can hit. Uh, this is a guy that's going to hit for power. Again, he is a guy that is susceptible to the strikeout. That's what we do in the minor leagues. We're going to work on stuff like that. We're going to work on really learning how to hit that ball, situational batting, patience, stuff like that. Aaron Sabato has the mental makeup to be able to do that. He has performed at, at high school. He's performed at the college level. And I believe he will perform at the minor league level and eventually make it to the big league club up there in Minnesota. My risk factor for Aaron Sabato, going to be a 3.5 out of 5. Again, the only drawback I see here is if he can't cut down on those strikeouts and as he progresses through the minors and starts seeing better pitching, does he respond to that or does he regress from that? That's where your risk is going to come in with him. But if he makes the progressions that I believe he will make, you'll see him at the major league level and definitely one of those guys that I think is going to hit a lot of bombs um, sometime in the future. Just got to cut down on the strikeouts, and, and they also got to figure out a little bit about defense with him. But that is all typical stuff that you see with young players in the minor league system. My final player is going to be Alexander Ramirez of the Angels. He's an outfielder for the Angels. This is a little bit more of a deep pick, um, but I believe you'll see why here in a minute that even though he's more of a sleeper pick on this list, that I think you'll see some great, great returns here in a few years if you get in cheap on Alex Ramirez now. Here's your three reasons to believe. First of all, he was drafted when he was 16 years old back in the 18 um, international draft class. And um, in the Dominican Summer League, in only 39 games, he had 17 extra base hits. The, the Dominican Summer League, a very competitive league, and, and it was a limited time that he had there, but he raked through that system real fast. Um, all of the scouting comps basically have him as an Eloy Jimenez um, in regards to his size and power. That is who he is most often re, um, compared to. And when you think about Eloy Jimenez, unfortunately he's going to be injured this year because of uh, his, his pec being torn. But another one of those guys that can hit for power, that can make contact, uh, spray the ball to all uh, sides of the field, and just really use that field. He projects as a really smart hitter and is really, really young. Um, right now, at the age of 18, his hit power scouting grades are at 45 and 55. So you're talking about a guy that's got a lot of power, still got a little bit to work on on the hitting, but he projects as a very, very nice, solid player in the Angels farm system. The Angels farm system, although it is improving, um, definitely could still use some work. So you may see him progress fairly quickly through the Angels farm system. And my risk rating on him is going to be a four out of five. Uh, not quite the hitter that some of the other players on this list are, but definitely because he's young um, and the Angels definitely know how to work with hitting in their minor league system. It's a big focus of theirs. And I believe the risk is going to be a 4.5. This is one of those players that right now is not rated in the top 100 prospects. So he's a little bit deeper, has a lot of, has a lot of work to do. But he's young, he's got time to do it, and I believe next year at this time you will see him on that top 100 list, and you will probably see him um, starting that transition to the high minors and into the majors here in short order. So, what are some of the other Bowman cards that we can find? Well, here is your list of all the Bowman first cards that you can find in 2021 Bowman. Some names that I would call out here that we did not cover off on that you may want to also consider looking at for investment opportunities. You're going to have card number BP7. That's going to be Maximo Acosta. He's on the Rangers. A lot of hype around Maximo. Um, you also have one of the best pitchers that is in this, and that's going to be Mick Abel down there on the Phillies. A nice one there. 
Uh, we covered off on Austin Martin and Blaze Jordan. But there's a few other ones here. Christopher Morrell for the Cubs. Uh, very nice prospect there. And there's a few other ones that you may want to look into. Uh, Bowman always has a few surprises. So these are the ones that are confirmed. I think you will see more that have autographs only. Not sure who those are going to be yet. But as you look at that checklist as it comes out here pretty soon, I think you'll see that there are some autographs only. And some of those players you may want to invest in as well. So... Remember, if you want to track all these cards, Sell the Peak is the place you want to do that. Your reasons to believe, they've got card charting, PSA report, sales history, um, and card comparisons. You can do it all in one dashboard. Um, there's real-time eBay sales history with best offer accepted prices, and that you can even build your dashboards for specific players or multiple players put multiple cards and multiple uh, sales charts all into one view. It's very cool, guys. The website, sellthepeak.com. And if you use my promo code OC30, you can save 30% on your first month's membership. Membership is really low. It is much lower than all of the other competitors, and it's going to give you all the same features and better customer service. Sell the Peak, guys. Go check it out, sellthepeak.com. And I hope that as you are opening up your 2021 Bowman packs, that you can use this video as a little bit of a guide for who you should be looking for. And I hope that you have fantastic luck in your pack polls. And as always, I hope that you guys will throw over to first hit that like button. If you like these videos and if you would like to see more of them, that's the best way to let me know. And until next time, guys, I hope you are being good to your family, being good to your friends, being good to your neighbors. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching.